Ladies and gentlemen, learning an instrument is probably one of the most expensive hobbies out there. Uh, one, because you have to invest in an instrument, which can be very, very expensive at first. And you have to invest in private teachers and several other equipment that goes with learning the instrument. Now, we've all had that beginner cheap violin made from China. And although it's a great way to start off learning the violin with a low budget, it can get discouraging after a while as your technique improves. One of the things that make it discouraging is the sound projection, right? So although you're doing all the right things, the instrument might not be resonating as much as you would like it to. That can create a dry and nasal sound, right? So for example, right? So not the best sound quality. Now, just to put this in perspective, I will play on my $10,000 violin. Right, so already you can hear a major difference in the sound quality. So I've gone ahead and looked on eBay to see if I can find some cool violins there. Okay, so eBay is essentially an auction house where you can bid on several items uh, for a limited amount of time, and the person who bid the highest uh, ends up receiving the item. Now, I was looking for violins that were ranging between $500 and $700, and I've got two of them, which I'm going to review today. Now, stick until the end to see if it's truly profitable to buy violins off of eBay. So quick disclaimer, before you buy any violin, Make sure to try it, okay, and to examine it. Uh, make sure to look for any cracks, uh, any scratches, any missing parts, right? Those are really, really, really important things to, to keep in mind. All right, so the first violin that I've come across is uh, labeled Mantegasia 1775, okay? It's a 4-4 violin. And what caught my attention in the beginning was its reddish golden color. This violin does not have any cracks or openings. Um, the F holes look well constructed. And I mean, look at this varnish, beautiful varnish. So one thing you want to look out for when you're buying violins is the overall shape, right? Um, a violin that's very flat and vertical like this, it's probably not gonna have the most vibrant sound. Um, and as you see here, uh, just the layout of the violin, it, it does seem very flat. So we don't really see an arced shape uh, contour, which will probably lead to a bit more of a dry sound. So this violin came from Germany and it seemed pretty legit. The scroll and the pegs looked all very nice. And I said, you know what, all right, I'll go ahead and buy it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Uh, I can return it if I'm not satisfied with it. Um, so I ended up spending 659 uh, Canadian dollars, which equates to around 500 US. And surprisingly, it shipped pretty quickly. And here is the Mantegasio violin. Okay. So, it is as described, there is no cracks, no openings, uh, and it all seemed legit. So let's play it and hear how it sounds. So it came with all four strings, uh, however in the middle of the night I just hear a big pop, and I thought someone had entered into my apartment, but it ended up being the string just snapping. And it's probably because the strings were very cheaply made. I mean, the dude wrote in the description, brand new strings, when he didn't specify the quality of them. So this violin has a lot of potential, okay? Uh, what I personally don't like about it is that it doesn't resonate as much as I would like it to. Um, it, it does sound a little bit muffled, and the reason for that is because the violin is a little bit flat, uh, and that's something that I didn't pay enough attention to. But in general, for a violin this price, it sounds pretty good. I really like the color of the instrument. I mean, it's, it's so antique-like. Uh, by the way, uh, antiques don't make good violins. Okay, old violins don't necessarily make good violins. So that's just one thing to keep in mind if you're looking for an instrument. Also something I really like is the bridge. 
Uh, it looks very, very well made, and it's made out of uh, good wood quality. All right, so the other violin that I purchased uh, is labeled Busan 1751, uh, another 4-4 violin. So this is another violin that grabbed my attention. Again, it had a really nice dark reddish uh, varnish, and it just seemed like a very well-made instrument. Here's a closer shot on the back of the violin. So this violin had a slight crack that was professionally repaired, and it didn't really worry me that much because it wasn't close to the sound post. And I got this violin for $576, which equates to 435 US. So the violin itself looked very well on the outside. It had some slight scratch marks here and there, um, but I, I wasn't really too worried about it. It had a better overall shape than the other violin. However, when I started playing this instrument, uh, I felt that the neck was very thick. Okay, and it was kind of hard to wrap my hand around the neck. So that's just a personal preference. Let's try it on the uh, e, e string. like about this violin is that um, it has a very thin sound uh, right it's not a it's not a richly colored sound and, and I kind of feel like an airy sound when I play like a like a hissing sound right right so that's one thing that you really want to look out for when you're buying a violin Right, so make sure you play on all four strings when you're trying out a violin to really listen to uh, each string's different colors. Each violin is constructed in a way that uh, makes uh, a certain frequency resonate more than another. So that's something that you want to look out for. You want a very uniform amount of power on each string, right? So for example, on the E string, I hear more of a whistly uh, tone, and on the G string, it just can't bear uh, the amount of, uh, of weight that I put on it. So I think in general these uh, instruments are good for intermediate players who, uh, who are looking to slightly improve uh, from their beginner violins. But it's not a violin that you want to hold on forever, especially if you're pursuing more professional studies. Right? If you're if you're trying to play violin just for the fun of it, these kind of violins can be perfect for you. So before we leave off, I just wanted to spend one more minute uh, giving you some really important advice on what to look out for when you're choosing a violin. Uh, labels don't mean anything. Okay? They can easily be falsified, copied, uh, and they're not authentic. Okay? So most of the time labels can be fake. So don't buy an instrument solely because of what the label says. Second of all, try it, okay? Play it, play on different strings, play different melodies, play different pieces on it. Um, explore the different frequencies of the violin to see if you like the sound. Um, also record yourself playing the instruments, okay? Uh, and, and then listen to it afterwards uh, so that you can have a different auditory uh, angle on what it sounds like. And also have someone come with you. Uh, also listen to how you're playing. That can also be a very wise thing to do. Um, and obviously look out for uh, major things such as missing parts, cracks, scratches. The violin sometimes can be unglued from the body, so that's something to look out for. Check out the sound post. Now, I wouldn't recommend buying violins off of eBay. The reason for that is you can't know whether a violin sounds good or not. So the instruments that I bought were technically an experimental gamble. Just to teach you guys to not risk buying an instrument that you do not have the ability to manipulate uh, beforehand. So I hope this video was useful for you. And as always, like and subscribe and go practice.